Oh, look at that. It's a holiday special. Can you believe it? Can you believe we've gotten to the point where we're doing holiday specials? What's going on, everybody? It's me again, Carson. Carson Higgins, if you want to be really formal about it. Uh, for those that have watched the show before, are you playing Where's Waldo right now? Have you found Groot? Because he's right there. Boom. Hey, buddy. I put him up there with the nutcrackers and stuff. Happy holidays, everybody. I know it's a couple days late to be, you know, this Christmassy, but hell, who cares? It's uh, it's the Christmas episode, man. We watched the the opera known as the Magic Flute. Uh, not to be confused with the artist formerly known as Prince, because I, I definitely got a pretty cool sweatshirt for Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, check this out. Brought to you by Criterion, baby! Clearly, people in my life know me really well. Anyway... We watched The Magic Flute this week. Not just any old version of The Magic Flute, which if you're unfamiliar with, is a opera by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Perhaps you've heard of Mozart. Um, this is his most famous, most produced opera. It's still probably the most produced opera in the world. It's in every repertoire. <laughs> That's not exactly how you say that word. Of like every opera house in the world. You got to do this. This. Uh, this opera. But our man Ingmar Bergman, who uh, perhaps you've experienced him on your own, or if you've been participating in this club for a while, we've watched quite a few of his films. Um, what did we watch? We watched Wild Strawberries. We watched Persona. We watched Through a Glass Darkly. We wa we watched a couple. Uh, we like Ingmar Bergman around here, and uh, maybe you do too. And that's why for our, our Christmas special, I thought it'd be fun to uh, enjoy a live performance by one of cinema's greatest cinema people. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you got a chance to watch The Magic Flute or if you have seen his version before, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was very cool. I had never seen The Magic Flute before. Um, I knew some of the music, and I bet you do too. Uh, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, maybe you've heard this, the little... It's so high, it's a soprano, but it's Right, so you've heard that. That's Mozart. That's from the Magic Flute. And in 1975, Ingmar Bergman staged this opera with some of Europe's greatest soloists. And they recreated a, I forget the name, forgive me, famous opera house in Sweden. They like recreated the proscenium portion of it in a soundstage. And then... Bergman went out on the street and found people uh, with interesting, unique faces, and he put them in the audience. And uh, I don't think he had them watch the whole show, but uh, they were used to great effect. And if you have watched the film, then you know that at the very beginning, during the overture, um, which for those that don't know, that's where you're not watching the play yet. You're just listening to the music and getting sort of an appetizer for your ears of what you're going to be hearing. For the rest of the evening so it's it's the non-visual portion of a musical or an opera or a ballet or anything really with orchestral music uh but during the or or overture bergman is showing us uh boom nice big close-up shots of individuals in the audience and it's quite a diverse audience in age and sex and race and there's little children there's old people there's there's all kinds of people um and of course there is this one little girl that gets kind of heavily featured in this close-up, and we actually revisit her reaction throughout this, uh, this presentation of a live theatrical event. Um, something that I really dug about this movie, well, first of all, let's just let's hit you with a couple stats. First of all, critics loved this, this movie. It got a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was actually made for television, so this was a... Uh, Bergman, if you don't know, in, his later, in the later part of his career was kind of exclusively working in television and making very cinematic things for TV. Um, he also has a background in theater and directing theater <clears throat> and working with theater actors, so he's not totally out of his element working on this piece, though opera is very unique in, in the world of live theatrical experience, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was nominated for Best Costumes at the Oscar. It won an award at the BAFTAs. It got some special award at like the National Film Registry or something. It, it was very well received, and, and rightly so, because um, maybe you watched Hamilton over the summer. It was on Disney+. Plus. It's still there. If you haven't watched Hamilton, what are you doing? Um, but 
Um, maybe you felt this way, maybe you didn't. And I find this to be true a lot of times when you're watching a, a filmed version of a live theatrical experience is that you aren't, you aren't really invited into the room. You are watching the show happen on the stage and you're watching the people in the crowd, but you never really get to be one of the people in the crowd. You're kind of seeing them see it. And so you're always just a little bit more removed than if you were to be in the room. I feel the same way about stand-up comedy, but it, you know what, it, that, it doesn't matter. Um, the thing that I think Bergman does really well in this is uh, first he reminds us that we are these people at the beginning in, in all these shots we were talking about. But then once the curtain rises and we do see the set in the proscenium staged and we see the actors coming out and stuff, um, there's this really cool thing that he does where he incorporates the backstage life of the actors. <clears throat> And yet those actors are seemingly like in character. Um, just real briefly so you can get an idea. There's, there's a love story. There's a magic flute. There's a girl that's got to be rescued. There's the queen of the night. There's sorcerers. And uh, yeah. Truth be told, I couldn't really follow the story a lot of the time. <laughs> and that's just on me. You know, maybe you found it a lot easier to follow the story. Um, I, I had to do a little research afterwards to be like, so who's Papageno and what does he want from Papagena? Because I can only assume it's that he wants to be with her forever and sing with her forever. Um, <clears throat> but speaking of this Papageno fellow, right at the beginning, right, he, this, this character, if we were watching the opera, we would hear him playing this flute thing and then he would come out on stage and sing. What's really fun is Bergman shows... Papageno backstage seemingly like about to miss his entrance maybe so he like hears his cue and he he's running down the stairs and getting the things he needs and he he hits his little pan flute doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, right when he's supposed to but he's getting his props on and getting ready to go so that he can make his entrance on stage and then so it's almost like we're introduced to the character off stage and then we bring the character's life into the story and onto the stage and back to this thing that I was talking about about being a fly on the wall versus actually getting to experience the show is Bergman does this really cool thing uh, where I want to say like half the movie is shot like this where the camera is just like right in the singer's faces and they're singing at us in the camera. And so while we while we're getting this cut together version, right, like film cut uh, of a live show, you're seeing the, the full stage with all the moving parts, and then we bring it in to the characters, and then bring it full, and bring it in, and bring it full, and bring it in. Very similar to how we're used to watching cinema. So instead of making like a documentary sort of of a show happening, the, the camera becomes so much more involved in the storytelling, and so then the magic of the live story becomes more cinematic, and it's really quite impressive. And the thing that blew my mind, I had never seen this before, and it's from 1975, and there have been a lot of filmed musicals and plays and things since this this version, and I just can't believe that more directors uh, don't incorporate this style. It's so much more inviting for a, an at-home audience, and this was made for an at-home audience, though I guess it did have a life in theaters, and, and people like to show it in theaters around the holidays and things. Um, it was made for television, so it was made for people to enjoy at home. And I thought that Bergman really did a good job of, of taking that to heart and incorporating it into how he was going to tell this story. Um, brief side note, uh, I chose this, I, as I already mentioned, because I, I kind of wanted us to just have a nice, happy, live, maybe, a, maybe, maybe you and your family go to the theater and you haven't gotten to this year, or maybe around the holidays, you have gone to the Nutcracker Ballet, or maybe you've seen the Magic Flute live, or who knows. Uh, but I thought it would be a fun little thing for us to do uh, during the holidays. So I don't really have a whole lot more to say. I'm really glad that we, we, you know, we're closing out the year with this fun thing. I am gonna pick a, another another film for us, but uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, we'll really get we'll get back into the swing of things at the start of the new year. Uh, I figure there's, you know, award season is going to be kind of wonky this year, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on the streamers that are probably going to be nominated for Oscars and stuff. So, you know, if you take this week to catch up on some new stuff, if you weren't already, enjoy those things and enjoy the new stuff. I watched Soul, the Pixar movie. I cried. I loved it. Um, so enjoy some of those. I will put up a new pick. 
Um, go ahead and follow us at Filmstruck Film Club on Instagram and Facebook. You know, like and comment, subscribe on YouTube. We have that podcast that's new, baby. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, it's a, I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's the first rule of Film Club. It's on wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Uh, so check that out. And uh, yeah, you guys, I hope you had a happy holiday. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. Kiss this year goodbye. Mwah, because we're coming up to a new one. What's the may all acquaintance, blah, blah, blah. Party like it's 1999. Have a great new year. I love you guys. Mwah.